Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I hope you told somebody about Jesus this week. Um, and I want to challenge you to invite at least one person to church this week. I hope you'll do that. Set that as a goal um, and uh, see what uh, unfolds as a result of that. Okay, anybody uh, reading your Bible through? Are you on time uh, with that? Uh, or at least, did you read your Bible each day last week? How about that? Uh, last week, we would have been in 2 Samuel and Luke, and we had uh, we would have come across the answers to these trivia questions. The first one is, what daughter of David's was raped? Oh, um. Yeah. I don't remember her, her name. I don't, oh, goodness. Tamar. Yes. And then the brothers all Tamar. went. Tamar. Okay, revenge. so third. Don't get ahead of me. Okay. The third <laughs> uh, question was, what did Absalom do to avenge the rape of his sister? Didn't he plunder and kill everyone? I know one of the brothers did. He killed. Know. He killed the brother that that mm -hmm. uh, raped his sister. In the New Testament, Jesus teaches a parable that starts like this: A man had two sons. What is that parable about? The prodigal son. The prodigal son. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, and if we were to remind uh, ourselves about what uh, our purpose statement is, it is to see unbelieving people become committed followers of Jesus Christ. We just finished last week a study of the words of or the teachings of the risen Jesus, what he taught uh, uh, after he rose from the dead, before he ascended to the Father. And uh, the class uh, decided they wanted to do a study in the book of Galatians. So we're going to start today in the book of Galatians. And we're going to start with a little background information. Uh, the first is, uh, who were the Galatians? Well, the... Uh, uh, the research I did showed that uh, they were basically people that uh, had descended from folks that came in from Gaul, G-A-U-L, uh, which was basically Western Europe. Uh, and they were uh, French, Belgium, today they would have been French, Belgium, Italian, uh, uh, Spanish, and so forth. But the Gauls came uh, into that area and the location, the geography, well, uh, the main city in Galatia was what is today modern, uh, modern day Ankara. Ankara is, I'm trying to roll my R's a little bit, I've been studying Spanish. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Ankara is the capital of Turkey. So uh, Galatia is uh, located in what is today uh, Turkey. The book of Galatians has as its theme the basic doctrine of the gospel, and it is corrective in nature. Uh, because the Galatians had been plagued by some false teachers who had brought in some heresies uh, after Paul had established them in the gospel. Uh, the, uh, uh, the 16th century monk uh, in the Catholic Church, Augustinian monk, whose name was Martin Luther, came to faith as he was studying the book of Galatians. He had tried to find relief from his guilt in what the church had taught 
that we are saved by faith, but that faith is given as a result of our uh, uh, obedience where we have been deemed to merit the grace. So it's not really grace if you earn it, you know? Uh, but that's what uh, Martin Luther tried to do all those years uh, as he was miserable, depressed, and, and uh, just absolutely distraught because he knew he was sinful and he knew that God is holy and he feared God. He feared uh, Jesus because he knew that since God is holy, and he certainly was not, that if he died in that condition, that uh, uh, he would be separated from God for his entire life. So we're going we're gonna to read not the first whole chapter, but we're going to read the first uh, 10 verses. So somebody read verses 1 through 5 of Galatians chapter 1. Paul and an apostle said, not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brothers and sisters with me to the church of Galatia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. All right. Then somebody else read verses 6 through 10. What chapter? Chapter, chapter one. 1. Okay, cool. Galatians chapter 1. Six no other ten. gospel. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. You said 10, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Uh, Paul starts his letter uh, by identifying himself uh, at the very beginning, it, you know, these things were written on scrolls and you didn't know who was necessarily who was writing it until you had unrolled it all the way to the end where uh, the signature would be. So Paul gets uh, to the point up front as far as identifying who he is. And in chapters one and two, Paul identifies himself and then he also defends his apostleship because there were others that had come in uh, wolves in sheep's clothing that tried to tell them that, oh, he he's really nothing and uh, uh, what he told you was wrong. Uh, so chapters one and two are a defense of his apostleship. Now the outline continues, chapter three and four uh, we we begin to see the very heart of the gospel where it establishes that salvation is by grace alone in Christ, <coughs> faith alone in Christ alone. And then in chapters five and six, we, we learn how a Christian is supposed to walk, how we're supposed to live out our faith. So we get started in, in, in verse uh, uh, one by uh, saying that, hey, I'm Paul, and I'm coming to you uh, as uh, a person. I'm not appointed by any group of people. 
I'm not sent of my own volition, but I am coming to you because Jesus Christ himself uh, is sending me. God the Father is sending me, the one who raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, uh, what do we know about Paul's encounter with Jesus Christ? His own personal encounter with Jesus. It happened on the Damascus Road. On the Damascus Road. Road. Coming back from stoning Stephen or having him stoned, he was... It was shortly after that. And uh, he was on his way. He had gone to the chief priests and the elders of the Jewish faith, and he had uh, secured orders from them and authority to go to Damascus and to arrest anyone that he found to be as they called it then, in the way. Uh, uh, the believers in Jesus Christ. So on <coughs> his way there, he was, uh, uh, he was spewing vitriol toward Christians. He was imprisoning some and, and assisting in the death of others. Uh, he was a nasty kind of guy. Uh, if you're a Christian, you didn't want to bump into Saul of Tarsus, which was his name before he met Jesus. Uh, but when he met Jesus, he was radically changed from one who persecuted Christians to becoming one of them, one of us himself. Uh, so he met Jesus and Jesus himself commissioned him to be this apostle to the Gentiles, to the Gentile world. And that was his authority. He says, not any human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself and by uh, insinuation, by the authority of Jesus Christ himself and God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Um, so he's establishing who he is and what his authority is, the chain of command, Father, Son, Paul, okay? And he says uh, uh, he's being sent by all of the brothers and sisters that are uh, joining him in sending this letter to the church or to the churches of Galatia. Uh, and then verse three, may God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul has a way of always marrying those two words together, grace and peace. Okay, so what is grace? Forgiveness. Okay, forgiveness. Grace is receiving the uh, merit, like, um, is getting good things we don't deserve. Like exactly. Blessings we don't deserve. Like the blessings, blessings that we don't deserve. Yeah. Do we deserve to be forgiven? Mm -hmm. No. That's what, that's what grace is, that this forgiveness has been offered freely if we will just simply <clears throat> uh, have faith in Jesus and <clears throat> receive the gift of forgiveness from, uh, from God. So he says, uh, uh, may the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. That's once we receive the grace and we are satisfied in ourselves that we know that we've been forgiven, that's where the peace comes from, is uh, knowing that we have uh, been justified, that we've been forgiven, that we are no longer under a sentence of eternal damnation because we've been forgiven. That brings great peace. All right, so verse four, then he begins to establish the doctrine of this, uh, this book. 
He says, Jesus gave his life for our sins. And he repeats this, <clears throat> this theme throughout all of his uh, writings. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Well, that didn't help. <clears throat> all right. So, but, but he says, uh, Jesus gave his life for our sins. He died on the cross. Uh, he says over in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, that God is so full of, or, or rich in kindness and grace that he paid for our freedom. He wanted us. So, you know, we don't, we don't generally pay for stuff we don't want. You know, we go into a store and, and we exchange money for something that we want. Uh, where do we get money? We exchange a part of ourselves, our time, our effort, our intellectual capital, our muscle or whatever. We exchange that in return for money, right? Mm -hmm. So when we spend our money, we're giving some of us for something that we want. Mm -hmm. So it says that, he is so rich uh, in um, grace and mercy. Uh, I, I, it, it, I've lost it there for a second. He is so rich in uh, mercy and grace that <clears throat> he purchased our freedom. Our per he purchased our freedom. He gave of himself for something he wanted. What did he pay for our freedom? Everything the life of his son, the blood of Jesus. And this is, it says that in Ephesians 1, 7, that he paid for our freedom with the blood of his son. Oh my word. What greater price could be paid? Uh, there isn't one. And then it says, and he forgave our sins. So uh, he gave his life for our sins. So the father paid the price for our forgiveness with the blood of his son. And uh, just as God our Father planned. You see, there's a song that, that kind of grates on me uh, when it's sung uh, because it's not true. Uh, they searched all over heaven, you know, to find a savior. No, they didn't. Uh, uh, the plan of salvation was established before there ever was a world. Right. Before uh, creation. Right. Before creation, before the foundation of the earth. Uh, in the mind of God, Jesus was slain for our sins. <clears throat> so when God created Adam, he knew that Adam was going to sin. Mm -hmm. And he knew that Eve was going to sin. And he knew that uh, even though they only had one rule to keep, they couldn't keep the one rule. Um, and that there would be sin and there would be a need for forgiveness and a plan for that forgiveness. He even said, thorns and thistles thou shalt bring mm -hmm. forth for your sake. And people think that, well, he's going to make a rocky road or whatever, but it's talking about Jesus. Thorns and thistles. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt bring forth. And that means I'm going to make a way out. So just as God our Father planned, just as he planned, it was this, this whole thing was a part of the plan. Uh, we shouldn't blame the Romans or the Jews for crucifying Jesus because that was part of the plan. <clears throat> Jesus orchestrated all of that to make it happen on that very day to fulfill prophecy. <coughs> so, um, Jesus gave his life for our sins just as the Father planned in order, and this is the result, in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. Aren't you glad that we are being rescued? Mm. This place is a, a terrible place. This is not our home. If you're a Christian, this world is not our home. Yep. Uh, we have a home with Christ forever in glory. Uh, 
And we are being rescued from this world in which we live. Verse 5, all glory to God forever and ever. Uh, the, Paul was saying this, and then he just broke into some, some praise, uh, thinking about how we are being rescued from this world. Uh, and you think it, 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 it is bad today. Uh, it was as bad or worse then when this was being written. Uh, very little justice. Uh, uh, so, verse 6. He says, I am shocked. Uh, you don't want your preacher looking at you and saying, I am <clears throat> shocked that you're so soon turning away from God. No, you wouldn't want your, your leader to, to look at you and say that, would you? Uh, but they had people coming in saying that, yeah, Paul, Paul was okay, but he didn't tell you all of the truth. <clears throat> Let me tell you about the rest of the story. And then they would be bringing in uh, uh, things that weren't true. Uh, for instance, in, in 600 AD, uh, the uh, uh, Muhammad said, oh, the, the, the Bible is so corrupt, you can't believe what the Bible says. Let me tell you what to believe. And that's where Islam was birthed. Uh, then in 1830, a guy named Joseph Smith said, uh, well, you know, the, the Bible is true, uh, but let me explain it better to you. That God was once a man, but through this process, he became God. Jesus was born a man, but through this process became God. So you can submit yourself to this same process and you can become God. And there are many other gods out there. Uh, and, and Jesus was the spirit son of the father and, and the devil is his brother, okay? So... I was on a flight from Atlanta to Salt Lake City one time, and I got the privilege of sitting next to a Mormon missionary. And is that he, what their belief system is? Yeah. Wow. They don't want to tell you that, but that's what Ooh. it is. Uh, and this guy was trying to tell me that uh, I needed to believe that this Book of Mormon was gospel also. It was scripture also. And I, I, I used the terms here uh, that are spoken of, verse 8, let God's curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel for he from heaven that preaches a different kind of gospel than the one we preach to you. I say again, what we have said before, if anyone preaches any other gospel than the one that you welcome from me, let that person be accursed. I met one of them guys, and he had so, like nine wives. I was like, wow. So... <laughs> So, yeah. There's so, jealousy and dissension and division. I'm like, God. So, uh, so they, they, were being, they were being taught things other than what the Bible teaches. And for them, the only Bible they had was the Old Testament, which is clearly uh, uh, Scripture and from God. So he says, I'm shocked that you've turned away. Um, uh, from God who called you to himself in loving mercy of Christ. What is, we, we discussed what grace is. Grace is receiving something that you don't deserve. What is mercy? Not receiving the punishment we deserve. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Okay? So, when we receive forgiveness, we no longer are under the curse of the sins we've committed, and we're no longer going to have to pay the penalty for our own sins. That's mercy. So, um, so he says, I'm shocked that you're turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. And you're following a different way that pretends 
to be the good news. There are a lot of pretenders out there, a lot of systems pretending to be the way uh, when the Bible is very clear about the way. Uh, we, we don't earn grace uh, as some systems teach. We don't, we, don't, we don't deserve it, and we're given grace even when we don't deserve it. Um, and with that comes mercy, not getting what we do deserve. So you're following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but it is not the good news at all, and there will be people that will miss it. They'll miss heaven because they've been misled. Um, you're being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Most of the teachers of these uh, cults, uh, false religions, um, they are intentional. They deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ, saying, oh, he didn't, he didn't really die on that cross. He just kind of swooned. He passed out, and they thought he was dead, and they put him in the, in the tomb, and, and then in that cool tomb, he revived. He didn't r rise from the dead. Well, uh, that, that kind of jumps out there, okay? Uh, so, but we know that the Romans, masters of murder, knew how to kill people, and they knew when they were dead. So, uh, but uh, they, there are still people that twist the truth concerning Christ. Verse 8, uh, let God's curse fall on anyone. And he says, even me or even an angel from heaven if they preach a different kind of gospel than the one that we preached to you. He's saying that the truth that he taught was truth, and it was perfect truth. Uh, but there are folks out there that uh, misrepresent the truth and will uh, uh, deliberately twist it. So... He says, if anybody does that, let them be accursed. Uh, I say it again. He, if, so for emphasis, he goes back and he says, I'm gonna, listen, did you get that? Let me, let me just make it clear. I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, if anybody preaches any other gospel than the one that you welcomed, let that person be cursed. Wow. That's awful mm -hmm. to be cursed. We better be careful that we know the word, right? And what uh, I like about this is Paul was cool with his imprisonment. And if they were going to take him out, he was like, I'm, you know, I, I'm good with that. He said, if I be with you, that's one thing. If I die, that's another. But basically everything he had given, he, he got back and he was still cool. He was like, I'm in chains. Mm -hmm. I'm writing to you from mm -hmm. chains and I'm good. <clears throat> He yep, said, I'm good with he, is. he understood that what he gave, he was going to get. Well, no big deal as long as the gospel was preached. You know, and that so was... his, his whole point, his whole purpose was to get the gospel out so out people ever. would hear the gospel uh, and come to saving faith. And, and uh, he was responsible for uh, probably two-thirds of the writings of the New Testament. That's right. Uh, and he, so he's been very effective in doing that. <clears throat> Verse 10, he says, obviously I'm not trying to win approval of people, but of God. There are those uh, preachers, those teachers that really their preference and their goal is to draw people to them. Paul says, that's not my goal. Uh, I'm not trying to win your approval. I'm not trying to win the approval of the masses. Uh, I want to win the approval of God. At the end of the day, 
at the end of the day, isn't that what we all want? Uh, you know, there may be people that agitate us and irritate us, uh, and there may be people that we wish liked us, but at the end of the day, the one that really matters is God. Mm -hmm. We want Him to say on that day when we stand before him for the first time, we want, him, we want to hear him say, good and faithful servant. well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So there are things that folks do <clears throat> for, for Christ and for the, for the kingdom that nobody ever sees. And, and and sometimes there are things that are done that, that people don't appreciate. Hmm. Well, what my comment on that is, he sees it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's all that matters. Yep, mm -hmm. He sees it. And that's what matters. Okay. Um, well, we're wrapping up now. Uh, so I'm not seeking approval of people, but of God. If, ple if pleasing people were my goal, then I'd not be Christ's servant. Right. We can't be people pleasers <clears throat> and be a servant of Christ. Uh, our, our goal is to please God mm -hmm. in all that we do. Uh, and we please some people along the way, but that's not the goal. The goal is to please God. I hope that we'll, we'll, we'll think about that this week and um, remember that that is our focus. And a part of studying the Bible and reading the Bible is to be able to know false teaching when you, when you hear it. When you're sitting next to that uh, Mormon missionary on the plane or the, the, the Jehovah Witnesses come and knock on your door, mm -hmm. uh, you got to know the word and you got to know error when you hear it, uh, when you hear that feel-good uh, uh, message, message from uh, a radio or TV preacher, you need to know when they're spouting error. So let's uh, let's commit to read our word, to know it, and to be about uh, that business. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. We thank you for the word, for this book of Galatians and the truth that is uh, embedded in it. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to study your word so that we'll know error when it uh, presents itself and we'll know the truth <coughs> because the truth will set us free. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. You know, it's funny you brought that up because a lot of times I